Welcome back to another video, another sewing video. As you can see, there is some machine thing sitting in front of us. What could this be? What is this? It's a sewing machine. <laughs> Brand new one. Yes. I looked in the wrong spot already. I'm trying to work on it, guys. Um, obviously, if you've seen our other stuff, we're trying to make costumes. And so, to make costumes, you need to know how to sew. You could do it by hand, but that is Will take hard forever. and takes forever. A lot of patience. But easier to sew yep. with a machine. And I feel like the thread is stronger. It, see, the, the strength of the stitch all depends on how big your stitches are. If you have big, long, loose stitches, the stitching is going to be loose, it's going to fall apart more easily. But if you do like very tiny, like short stitches, it's going to be a lot more secure, come apart less, have a little bit more strength to it. We'll go over that. The more you know. So this is a new machine that my mom got, so thanks mom. Why don't you tell them what you know about sewing machines? Okay, so I did. I have worked a little bit with Ashley's mom's sewing machine. I have worked a little bit with Ashley's mini portable sewing machine. It's not a good one, it's like a little kitty one. I, I used it for our sewing project in college. Um, so I do know the basics, I do know how to like use the pedal. The only thing that sometimes still confuses me is placing the thread on the machine, like with the bobbins and stuff. Threading the machine. Um, do I you know what all the buttons and stuff mean? Pretty much. Um, I remember quite a bit. Like, am I still a little hesitant? Yeah, but I know a lot more than other she's people do. She's scared she's going to sew her fingers together. You know, that used to be a huge fear of mine, but I've gotten over it because there was this huge, huge machine that we had to use for our sewing project. That one was freaking oh, scary. The, yeah, the serger. It was. It was. Called? Yeah, it was for the seams. That was scary. It is very scary. It is powerful, very powerful. Um, the serge and edge is basically to like stitch an edge yeah. around. It's kind of like a like a. I don't know how to explain it. Throw in a picture. This is a serge edge. <laughs> Uh, so I it was just very powerful. We'll be giving Michaela a rundown of what I know, and yes. in that process, I will be giving you guys a rundown of a basic standard sewing machine. This is pretty much, I think, most of them typically tend to work the same way. At least I looked at this and was like, okay, it's pretty much similar. So I think it's pretty much a standard of mm -hmm. how they work. But if you want to know how to work one of these, yeah, prepare uh, for a mini tutorial. This one's a brother machine. Um, yeah, this one is a brother. The one my mom has that I tend to most. Oh, that's a blade there. Gotta be careful not to my finger. Um, I'm discovering new things. Mm -hmm. The one my mom uses is a Singer model. I'm pretty sure. Very old. I'm pretty sure she had it probably since I was born. Probably before that. It might be her original one. I don't know. She had a really older one on, on the porch, I think, in like a leather box. But yeah. Mm. Let's get to it. Yes, because next up I will be cutting my pattern and starting my very first piece for my costume. I am still trying to figure out the pieces to mine. So, I, it's because I'm patterned for my best one. I need to do my other one by scratch. Like the outer, outer piece that you guys, pictures. pictures. Let's cut to do it. Oh, Just okay. throws it off. <laughs> Transition. Woo. Transition. <laughs> Woo. Whatever we decide to use. Okay. All right. So, here is her machine. Ta -da. It's made of plastic. A little bit more lightweight than my mom's because obviously it's newer and not as monstrous. Uh, it's also got this kind of fun little thing. I'm assuming that's the model number. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Every sewing machine, just about, will come with a pedal. You put this on the floor, you press it with your foot. That makes the machine go. Lighter presses will be slower speeds. The harder you press, the faster it will get. Once you let go, it'll stop. It's basically how it said it in the manual. So basically, you're driving. Driving your sewing machine. Um, that's not even on the ground, but we don't need it right now because it's not on. Um, typically, when you turn on a machine, it will have a light built in. So you can see where you're sewing because you need to see the tiny little eye of the needle and all the thread and all that. So I guess while we're still over here, I'll show you what's over here. 
This is a needle. You put the thread in it and it punches it through the fabric, connects it through the bottom with the bobbin and sews your pieces together. So there's two different sides of thread. This thing right here, this is what we call a presser foot. Keeps your fabric in place. It'll have little latches, hers is right here. You press up and then uh, slide the fabric in. And then once it's in your place, you push it down. And then when you want to take it out, lift it up. That's that. Um, all these tiny little lines, these are measurements so you know your seam allowance. A seam allowance is basically how much room you have at the edge of your piece of fabric and how far in you want to stitch. Depending on what you're doing, it might have a very wide one, it might have a very tiny one. But basically, it goes up to like an inch is over here, down to like a quarter of an inch would be the edge of the presser foot. If you stick your edge to this line, it would be three eighths, half an inch, five eighths, three quarters of an inch, all that fun stuff. It might be easier to um, demonstrate once we're actually sewing. This part right here is the, dis the part I, dis I discovered in the last bit. Uh, some sewing machines, maybe all, will have a little blade so you can cut your excess thread. The one at my mom's is on the back here, so you would just like do this and just like pull it down and that does it. But on this, apparently, you put it in here. Don't ask me how, because I don't know. I'm still figuring that out. But you would kind of just... Did you get your bobbin stuck? Mm -hmm. You reinserted it. Alright, it's just a little tense. I don't know why. I haven't used this machine before, guys, and I don't know how to put this in. But there's a little blade. You're supposed to hook it in. It doesn't seem very intuitive. Eh, there we go. And it, voila, cuts it. So you can cut your excess off. Or you can just use scissors. That's what I usually do. And for time's sake, I'll probably do, be doing that in here. I think that's everything for that. These numbers, I don't, I didn't actually look at what these mean. I, oh, this is probably the tension rod. That's my guess. Should I consult the manual? I should consult the manual. But if I had to guess, it would be the tension rod. It decides how tight the um, string is going to be. That might be important. <laughs> no, really? I'm looking in the wrong section. Number six is so over here. The upper tension control dial. This controls the tension of the upper thread. That's what that does. This over here, you have your different type of stitches. Right now I have it set on just a straight stitch, normal basic stitches. They'll get different types of stitches for different things. These are zigzag stitches. Um, once you get down here, they're for elastic. So if you're using elastic thread um, to have it so you can like your material's a bit more stretchy and have some more give, you're gonna use elastic. But for just normal, typical sewing, if it's just normal things, just go with a typical straight stitch. These are different lines for different lengths, so it would be how, um, I guess, secure they are. This is, like I was saying earlier, longer ones are a little bit um, not as tight, whereas the tighter you go, the stronger it will be. This right here, this little thing you push, that's for a back stitch. So a back stitch is when you want to finish the edge because you don't tie knots when you finish sewing. So what you do is so you sew and you push it this way, and then pushing this will cause it to reverse and go this way. So you will, it kind of makes it a little bit more secure because you'll be going this way and then this way and it's less, e uh, it's harder for it to unravel. Hopefully I'm making sense. This, didn't pay attention to what that is, we won't need it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. This thing is a dial. I don't know what, what? it's called. It lifts this. Boom, 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 boom. You turn this to raise or lower your needle. So obviously when you're threading it or loading in your fabric, you need it up higher. And then before you start, you'll want to lower it just a tiny bit, just so it's right on the fabric so it doesn't move too much before the needle gets in it because then it can like... I guess jam a little bit more easily or not go through very easily. Um, hers even has this nifty little um, 
line on the top of it to know where the top is, but you can also tell the top by if the needle is up. That is a majority of it. Lastly, we have these little bits up here. This is where your thread is gonna go. I don't have any out right now. I also don't think, according to what she saw in the manual, we don't have the right like size thread, but I don't see why it should matter. I guess we'll find out if it matters. Oh yeah, oh yeah, real quick. Storage. That was not important. But it's cool. Look, and this is where my extra bobbins are. I don't know what that is. I don't know what those things, I don't know what those things are in there. I don't know. I'm a newbie, guys. I'm not a professional. But storage! Not that much. There's more than one. So there's a book right there. But yeah. That could have waited till the end. <laughs> As a bonus. Kind of like, look guys, it has pockets. <laughs> the sewing machine has pockets. So, obviously, lots of tools. You would put your thread right here and loop it through, and then you'll bring it through the tension thing, hook it around the hook, bring it back down, and thread it through the needle. I will thread it for you, and we'll show the camera how it's threaded. This piece right here is what you do to refill your bobbins. So, a lot of the time to get your fabric to match the same color, both on the top and bottom thread, you would, once this bobbin runs out, or you wanna put a different color on one, you stick it on right here, pop it over. Um, do you turn this? No, you don't, okay, so that stays still. And then you would take it out of the needle, re-thread it around this, pull it through the bobbin, and press your presser foot, and it'll just spin it and automatically fill it. We can show you that if we need to refill a bobbin. But yeah, I think that's pretty much the basics to this. I think you can give a whole rundown on your own now. I, I, I mean, I feel more comfortable with the <laughs> machine. I hope I was helpful. All right. Anything else we need to do? Nope. But next part. Next part. Transition. Oh, transition. Try new things. Okay. So now we are going to thread it. Uh, Michaela has already previously threaded this wrongly. Hopefully it's correct. I can always try and take it. So we're going to thread the machine. We are going to be using two different colored threads to demonstrate to you like what you stitch, like where they are so you can see the difference between them. Usually you would just use two of the same unless you want to do these two different colors. Just it depends on the project you're doing. So the bottom will be white, the top will be black. So we just have this like empty thing, which may not be the um, right size for the machine. So if it's not, we might break it. We'll find out. But this is the part that it goes on. And usually they will either have attachments for it for a long spool. This machine in particular, Michaela has informed me, you can pull this up and that will make it longer. So it's more secure, less chance of falling off. All right, so to thread it, you're gonna take a piece. Usually there'll be something right here that you'll wrap it through. The design of it is gonna be different with every model. For this one in particular, you bring it up under here, bring it down through this piece, under the tension rod, and back up and around this little hook. Um, okay, there we go. So you just kind of like gotta look for the opening. This one you have to, um, let's see if I can get it unthreaded. Whoops, how do I? Here, I'll bring it back through. Basically there's a little hook. Just look at your directions to find where it goes. I'll get you. So you wanna put it back, find the opening of the hook and then bring it back through so it hooks around it and pull it down. Then when you pull it down, you want to get it around this tiny little hook right here. Just another little piece of security, keep it tight and secured. There'll be an opening that you just slide it through. Then, you'll want to thread it through the eye of the needle. This little tiny hole that people always have a really hard time with because it's very hard to do. Whoops, the needle wasn't up during this. At least it was kind of up. This machine says to be up. Whoops and don't get it tangled like I just did. Ow. I 
stabbed myself. <laughs> I should not be a teacher. Injuries will occur. <laughs> All right, wait, can I just wrap it around the needle? Don't want to do that, so let's okay. take that out and stick it back through. There we go. Whoa, did you see that threading? And then it just goes under the presser foot and back here. And that's it. Ta-da! Should I take the bobbin out? Is it correct in it? I don't know. So, we're threading this. So guys, we also figured out that there is a slicer up here on this model for cutting your thread. So you can just go boop and slice it that way. So it doesn't have to be for there. It's gonna be a bunch of little thread pieces we're hanging around. So, this. I don't know if it's supposed to be- is it supposed to be twisted around that? I thought. It is, okay. I'm going to just, um... So for this one, models may vary. Some are under here. On my mom's model, you have to take this piece off and flip it down, and it's, um, flat up like this. So, different for everyone, so just look at the, um guide so you want the string coming this way according to that pop this in there looks like you gotta loop it around this bit right here and then pull it up through here two three and cut it then I'm assuming it should loop itself I guess we'll find out when we do our test stitch because I know when my mom Eventually, you it'll come up here and you pull both and you have to hold them when you first start sewing. Otherwise, because if you sew and start to sew and make a stitch and the, uh, I shouldn't have really been doing this while it was on, but oh well. <laughs> um, if you're not holding them or don't have this close enough, uh, it will start moving and the thread will not go with it. And you will have to re-thread it all. So. Do you want me to do a test stitch? Go for it. Or do you want to do something? I have a multitude of fabrics that I cannot reach right now. I brought a variety. I still have, and I don't know what I'm going to do with any of them, so we can just cut little pieces of them and test sew them. Technically, you guys would want an iron, too, and some pins. And... Yes. So. When sewing things, you will want something ironed out. So you wouldn't want it to be, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it with this, with this pattern. This is kind of messy. All right, this one's not too bad of an example. I'll just show, let's pull up this one. So with all these wrinkles, you're gonna wanna iron or press them, it's also called. You're gonna wanna iron them out, steam them out, so it's nice and flat because if you stitch it while it's all wrinkly, you're just gonna be stitching in wrinkles and you're not gonna be able to iron those out later. It also makes it so it's flatter and you know exactly how big your pieces are and make sure they match up. Like if you're you, if you're sewing two pieces together, you want them ironed out and flat so they are the same size so you don't have any like lopsidedness. Does that make sense? Yeah. She's nodding. Let's break out, let's cut a piece of this off, shall we? It's just... Is there selvage on both sides of this? Didn't you search this? No. Because I didn't use this one. Alright, we'll just cut this piece over here. The selvage is kind of like this edge that's um, finished in a lot of fabrics. Usually you don't want to um, sew that because obviously it's a different like material and Make the project look bad. <laughs> Don't use it. It's also thicker because it is finished. And there's something about that I still don't honestly understand. Like, you're supposed to go with the grain or whatever. Yeah. I have a hard time knowing which way is the grain and which isn't. I'd have to look back at my notes, and even then, I'm still like, I don't know what I'm for. So let's cut off some pieces. Cut off some pieces for you and me. I'll just cut along this wrinkle here. In reality, guys, we would be using an iron, but we're not doing it for this. We didn't think of it, so we don't have it. Well, also, this is just a quick test to test the machine as well to see if the machine works. 
Yeah, this is just a tutorial for both Michaela and you guys. And for me, learning to use this. Oops, I just hit the camera. Sorry guys, just punched you in the face. Let's just go for a little... Safety! Oh, and also something I thought of. So, sewing scissors. You guys may have seen, it's either like a Vine or a TikTok, I don't know what it is, about the woman flipping out. And she was like, you use my sewing scissors for tortillas! Oh! You know that one? Have you seen that one? I think so. Yeah, because people were like, huh, they're just scissors, so what? Don't use fabric scissors for things that are not fabric. Because if you do, it will dull the blade. I believe, I could be wrong, but sewing scissors, all different types of scissors, if they're for different materials, they're sharpened differently. These are sharpened to cut fabric. They're dense materials, cloth, and different, the different ways they're sharpened or whatever, they'll dull differently. So basically, Oh, don't use them on paper, don't use them on cardboard, don't use them on tortillas. Fabric. Only fabric. I'm sure the the uh, seamstresses and seams misters, I don't know what <laughs> the <laughs> mailers is. They might be gender neutral, I don't know. Any sewing people out there will know. I'm gonna use them for fabric. I think for tracing paper is fine though. Tracing paper or like pattern pieces, I think it's fine to just use your sewing scissors for that. If I'm wrong, correct me. But don't use it for other stuff. Anyways, do you want the rectangle piece or the triangle piece? I don't care. Um, so yeah, so here's this. I will show you um, stitching. So if you're following these lines, I'll do a half an inch as a sample. So if you're doing that, you'd want to line this piece up. Can they see that? You'd want to line it up to the half inch. And not all sewing machines are labeled, but this is like the um, the general like width. So an inch would be out here. The like I said earlier, along the presser foot is an eighth of an inch, or not an eighth, a quarter. Yes. Quarter inch. It, the fall, uh, it'll probably say on your manuals or whatever. You can find out. But so, just for a sample, I will put it up to half an inch. And once that's lined up, it also works as a guideline. I want to push it over here. It's over here now. You lower your presser foot. See, keeps it nice and sturdy and in place. You'll want to hold this as you lower your needle down. And this is going to be a test for me because I don't know how this one works. Have you tried it yet? Mm -mm. This is a test for machine and for us. Yes, so we're going to see how it is. Now, we weren't kidding. You could sew your fingers technically. Just don't stick your fingers in here while you're sewing. That's bad. Uh, also, something that's hurts before is if you get your knuckles hit by this because this whole thing moves up and down pretty rapidly. I've gotten my knuckle hit by this before. It hurts. So just try to keep it out of the way. And then, so when you're sewing and pushing it up, you just have to gently guide it. You don't want to like pull it. That can like break the machine. Um, just go with the speed it's at, but help guide it. Try to keep it like along this reference guideline to keep your stitch even. And so we're gonna slowly ease down on the pedal, get a feel for it. And let's see if the thing is wound co correctly. If it is, we'll have a stitch. <laughs> very quiet all right and there we go and now I'll show you a back stitch so you would just keep it here and like I said so you would just pull and hold this down might need a little slightly wider shot um, so you would just press it and then pull that down and go backwards and then whenever when you lift it up you'd want to raise the needle up we ended already up so we can just lift up the presser foot, pull it out, and then you can slice your ends. And ta-da! There's our stitch line. So you see the black stitching from the top and the white stitching from the bottom. So that's the stitch that we need. Ta-da! Yeah. This is actually this actually feels very nice. It's very quiet. Usually machines are very loud. The one that my mom has that I usually zone, very loud. 
um, so this is nice, not super loud and aggressive. It actually feels pretty easy to control. It didn't feel like it was throwing the fabric all over the place, but it's just like a matter of Probably. getting used to it and getting like, just getting your sea legs mm -hmm. for sewing. How would you rate this against your mini one? Now oh, I would use this over that one in a heartbeat. Um, I don't know what's what's wrong with that one, but it's like old, it's like, craft fashion or dressmaker, it's tiny, it doesn't have as many options, you can't choose like the width or like tension or anything. There's also an option like you don't have to use the presser foot, or not the presser foot, the pedal, you could like set it on a speed, but that's just really hard. You're not in as much control, and it just doesn't work very well, and I don't think it works anyways, because we were having trouble with it, and I think it just crapped out on us. How so. about against your mom's old, old one? The old, old one? No, well, I guess both. I haven't right. used, I don't think I used, if I did, I think that one also crapped out, and <laughs> just didn't, just started not working. Oh yeah, so, I'll finish this thought, and then I'll go with that. Um, I don't remember what that one was like. Um, I would probably go with my mom just because it's what I'm familiar with and also just so you can use this. But I don't think I would have any difficulties in this. Obviously, I've sewn two inches of thread, so I can't say I've got a handle on it quite yet. But it seems to be pretty smooth right now, so now you'll get to try. And also, a reason why you'd want to backstitch is that when you grab this, if you take this and like pull on this, um, you can like pull it out and your fabric will get like bunched up. This is also gathering. Sometimes if you want to do that, you can do this with a um, large stitch. Ooh, something I can demonstrate to you is the different stitch lengths. So we're on a straight stitch right now. We're on seven. Let's put it up to 10 to see the differences in the stitch length. And I'll just like, just so we're on the same page. Yeah, see now how this one's all bunchy? It's gonna be like that if you don't press it. Or if you pull the strings or just whatever. So just be careful with what you're sewing. Alright, we'll bring that. Just do another line. Find the pedal. I can't see it. I can't. I'm also wearing shoes, so I can't really feel the pedal very well. as smooth because I wasn't going for a guideline. Um, but yeah. Careful not to pull these too much or get them too loose because again they'll come out and you'll have to re-thread them. But yeah you can see the difference, the different sizes. This one has much wider stitches whereas this one has much tighter ones. Um, so yeah these will come out a lot easier. Like if you see when I pull this one it doesn't go as easily, whereas if I pull this one, I just gotta grab it, it pulls much more easily. So if you want to gather something and do a gathering stitch, do long ones because gathering is basically just being ruffled, wrinkly. I also did back stitch it, so this is also you can see the difference. When you back stitch it, it's gonna be a lot more secure, harder to come out, whereas this one is not back stitched and you can just like easily pull that out. And then the other side. A little easier to see with the white, small stitches versus the big stitches. Easier to pull up. It would show you what a seam ripper is. A seam ripper is my best friend because if you're clumsy or just like don't pay attention and accidentally make a mistake, you just put it in, it's like this little knife with a blade, or I should say, it's like a fork with a blade in the middle that you use to help rip out the stitches. But yeah. I should probably turn this on. Yeah. It's my turn now. Talk about what you're gonna do. What are you gonna try to do? I'm just gonna go for regular old stitch. Stitch. <laughs> Straight stitch first. Straight stitch. I think it's always a good practice one. I'm not, not as confident when it comes to sewing. I don't know guys, I'm just slightly more afraid. They're scary to me. You don't have to put it all the way through, just closer to the fabric. I always just like hold these just a little bit at first. Yeah, you can hold them at first. That's 
I, yeah. Okay, here we go. And then, what, you, you said you hold- That's all you're gonna do? You're not gonna go longer? I was gonna try to back it. Oh, okay. Whoops, I didn't have to do something. Cool. Yeah, remember how to do back stitches? Do you have to press and hold it at the same time? Do press what? So, do yeah. I have to hold this and press it? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not coordinated for this. Yeah, so you're still gonna, um, you're still gonna sew with the foot, and then you're also gonna pull that down. And it doesn't have to be super long, it only needs to be a couple stitches. And then pull it in. You don't need to go forward again. Well, if I want to keep going stitching. Well, if you want to keep stitching, then why did you back stitch? Back I stitch. wanted to try. Well, then start a new line. A back stitch is a finishing stitch. Because okay. you don't want to run over the seam lines um, too many times, because then they can get tangled on each other and cause a, um, cause a mess in there. And get jammed. That's the word I'm looking for. They can jam. That happens with mine. Sometimes my mom's just like, not much. Bam, look how easy that was. Now look at my back stitching. I went pretty straight. I'm quite proud of myself. Do the light. I can't even see if I'm focused yet. Look how straight. I'm pretty. Uh, you want to hold it a little bit flatter. You would only show it like a couple. Here, I'll put it in the light. Look how straight my back stitching was. There we go. Yeah, look You went like a full like inch. Go further, go down the length of it. I will, but I'm just really proud about how straight my back stitching was. It's nice. It's really dramatic lighting. Yeah, isn't it? Are you gonna try to... Uh, what? I was just gonna say, are you gonna try to like go along a seam allowance nope. width and not just a move? All right, we'll go down this first. We'll just go through the down the whole thing. And then we'll backstitch it. I don't have enough hands! When back, if you're gonna back stitch, not to um, let it get too far past the needle because then if you do, um, it won't um, fuck it up right. Boom. Okay. Boom. Once again, pretty damn straight. I'll show you guys the white side. See, you can't even see the back stitching. Now I can't see anything. Now I can't see anything. Keep right? moving it before I'm even even focus. You can see a little bit. It's a little thicker. Uh, now why don't you try going along a side? Look at that. So straight. So proud. You guys don't understand how hard it is to be straight though. You can quite easily just go. Wham. Yes, so, <laughs> with that said, why don't you try following one of the seam allowances? Why don't you try picking an edge and going, say, uh, why don't you follow a, um, a 3 eighths? Yeah, which one's that one? Oh, it see. says. Okay, here we go. So, as you can see, I'm lined up along the, um... That one went a little bit more crooked. <laughs> yes, I mean, sometimes it is hard to keep up with it. It's not too bad. Um, it's not bad at all. It's fairly straight. Sometimes, even if you follow it, if the fabric itself is like a little bit warped, sometimes that happens too. So you just gotta be lined up. 
but everything's like blue. So I have to say, after doing this, I do like this machine. How does it feel to you? How does the handle? Well, I like the pedal because you can go at the speed that you want. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like the pedal is nice. You know? I don't, it, that's hard to explain. You know, like, when you drive different cars, like, the pedals are a bit different? Yeah. This one feels nice. This is a nice pedal. Good. <laughs> Uh, I can see myself sewing on this one for my whole project. Well, you kind of got to if you want to use it. Uh, yeah, but you mean there's an option of returning mm -hmm. and getting and trying a different machine. So for, for those who are curious, this machine, so I was looking up sewing machines because I'm going to spend a lot of time sewing and Ashley's not going to want to sit here and stare at me when I'm at her house doing it. So this machine was on a lot of top rated cheap machines to get. It was like 80 bucks or something like that. And uh, so far I think it lives up to what it's saying. Or what, well, what it's saying, what people are saying. A nice, good machine that's affordable. Because mm -hmm. most sewing, a lot of sewing machines are like over $100. Yeah, they get expensive. They Especially get like the high expensive. end, like ones with like lots of features. But this one had a pretty good review for a really, really affordable price. Um, obviously I haven't done a sewing project with this yet, mm -hmm. so I might, that might change. Yeah, the sample I might change. feels good. The sample feels good. We'll see how it does the long haul, though. Let's see if, how it handles with different fabrics and different stitches. Oh, did you bring the, um, the stitch thing back down to seven, or were you on ten that whole time? I was on seven. Oh, did you bring it back? I brought it back. I was on seven the whole time. We can try a different stitch. Yeah, you can try different ones if you want. Should we go for? Just make sure the um the needle is raised up. It, it is. Up the, okay, because it has to be raised up. So it's. What should, have you done? Eleven. I did seven and ten. Oh, apparently that's the wrong one. Oh yeah, look at it. you can see the needle moving for when I change it. Different stitches or different positions. Different stuff. There we go. I think that's eleven. Yep, it's on eleven now. I think it is. It's whatever. <laughs> I. It's a little hard to see the little knobby thingy up here. Well, looking elsewhere, you're not gonna find it. <laughs> okay. Sometimes you want to get ahead of yourself. Just don't. Me <laughs> and you. if you did it because I didn't pay attention to how you were sewing, but I like to hold the fabric and help feed it through the whole time. Well, yeah, you kind of have to hold it, otherwise it could go, like, a, a wrong way. Forget, like... Sometimes people like to just let the sewing machine take the wheel, you know? I'm kidding. No, I'm don't kidding. do that. Because you need to feed it through, because if you don't, it's going to get crumpled, you're going to have, like, lumps sewn together, you're going to have it, like, stitched over itself especially if there's two pieces of fabric like guys typically if you're sewing you have a fabric against a fabric you're not just stitching lines into this unless you're doing like a design detail so uh, if you do that your pieces are gonna get unaligned should we show how to work with pins Nah, we can show that when I get to my pattern all right you guys don't get to see pins yet that'll be the next level it came out of its needle. And if your string, or I should say, if your thread is frayed at the end, you can flip it. You could, but it's gonna be very hard, so just like trim like a tiny bit off of it. Sometimes those can also make it fray too, that's also why. Sometimes I just use scissors because sometimes the little blades will make it go all weird. It's almost there! Also, don't lick your communal thread. I licked my times. I licked my finger, then the thread. Yeah, so you're licking things and putting your germs all over it. Yeah. Hi guys! 
And that, kidding, that won't be our <laughs> ends our sewing lesson. You missed it, but I just You're went all. You're gonna keep that in. I, I just went all chaos. Yeah, right. The camera turned <laughs> off. She was like, "Let me sew with the presser foot up and just <laughs> <laughs> throw everything off." As soon as the the camera off, I was like, "All gloves are off, man." My bad. Like, oh, of course you do. And then I'm just like, "No, no, stop! Don't do that! No." <laughs> <laughs> You're making it worse. She's like, no, it's fine. Look, I fixed it. I was like, that's not fixed. You have thread wrapped around the needle. <laughs> All right, do you want me to record this? Or no. You are. Yeah, it's because of the tension. Probably that's needed for eleven or twelve. You're so... What? What were you doing? That's because of the tension. It didn't even look like you were feeding it through with your hands. Well, writing it all go. Yeah, so you probably need. See, it's not going hard down. You hard don't have enough. the presser foot down. That works, yeah, that too. Oh, that looks better. But no, you didn't keep the thing in it. Now it's not going to be lined up. You do it with the needle lowered, still in it, holding it in place. It's chilling. It's stuck in the machine. Pull the thing. There we go. No, turn the thing. There we you, go. What, 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 what are you doing? You're wrapping it around. What are you I doing? I was fixing it. You did not fix it. It's right here. It's fine. Of course you start chaos as soon as the camera's <laughs> off. <laughs> uh, you guys missed it. Oops. Hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial video. Hope this was helpful to you. If you ever want to use a sewing machine or if you want to get one. I also keep you guys one. updated on how this little guy's doing when I actually start doing. Yeah, we'll probably film once we get to the sewing sewing because that's the fun part. Ashley will definitely be here for my desk making, but after that, she probably won't be here for every single piece. But definitely for the first piece. I swear you don't want me for the harder ones. All right, mm -hmm. We'll see. I still have to make mine too. Like I was saying earlier, I still have a lot of playing to do. Because mine are, I'm making the pattern pieces myself. So I'm trying to figure out the shapes of the, sh the everything. I have to do that for my very outer piece. Yeah. So. Fonts. I don't really have any updates Fonts. for you. Because I haven't been able to really work on it. Because I've had a lot of things on my plate but, lately. Uh, Connie gave us some fabric. So thank you, Connie. I'm going to use it for my vest. And then depending if there's enough left over, if Ashley likes it, she'll use it for her costume as well. We'll have to it's 100% cotton. So. 100%. That's purebred cotton. <laughs> purebred cotton. <laughs> we have like seven feet of it and seven, seven feet. Yards. Seven yards. No, don't you have like, oh is it seven yards? Oh, yes. I, was, I was thinking five, but that's your other fabric. Yeah, we have seven yards of it. That means seven to like 21 feet, 21 square feet. Oh, you guys haven't even, I ordered the outer piece for my costume. Trying to get that fabric, man, was very frustrating. More on that. More on that later, if you guys want to hear it. But uh, I guess that's it for this video. So please comment, like, subscribe. Share. Let us know if you've used a sewing machine before. Let us know if this was helpful for you. Or cringy. Or painful. Or let us know if you're gonna make something after this. Tell us about your sewing <laughs> machine experience. Which sewing machine do you like? Which ones do you hate? Do you like brother, yeah. the brother band, or do you? I thought you were gonna say, do you like brother bear? Or brother bear. Yeah, that's kind of irrelevant right now, but yeah, it's a good movie, <laughs> good series. <laughs> Anyways, as always, bye guys. Bye.